Welcome back. For the rest of this unusual semester, we will be meeting online. Nothing else will change. You will have a reading assignment for each Tuesday and Thursday as per the syllabus. There will be a pre-quiz and a follow-up quiz for each of our virtual class meetings. The due dates for the quizzes will be set pretty much as before. The only difference is that the time they are due will be 5 p.m. rather than 9 a.m. Each virtual class meeting will consist of about three short video lectures using the same deck of slides we would have used in room 341. The important thing is to keep calm and carry on. Because we will not be meeting together in a classroom again, it is important that we take advantage of the discussions list on iCollege. Not the user-friendliest medium, I agree. Activate notifications to keep up with what is going on. And when you get to the list, look for that number in parentheses, colored blue, to see what's new. Recall that the last time we met, we discussed accessorial liability. In particular, we focused on the culpability, or mens rea, required to convict a defendant of a crime whose absolute perpetrator was somebody else. We found that the law has settled on the so-called peony doctrine. To be convictable as an accessory, the defendant must be shown to have had the purpose of promoting the offense. Mere knowing facilitation is not enough. Some courts make an exception for the gravest offenses, as we saw in the case of U.S. v. Fountain in the Seventh Circuit. The American Law Institute considered a proposed draft that would have made knowing substantial facilitation a sufficient showing of culpability. But that draft was debated and rejected. The model penal code, as adopted by the Institute, embraces the Peony Doctrine across the board. The relevant model penal code section provides, a person is an accomplice of another if, with the purpose of promoting or facilitating the commission of the offense, he solicits such other person to commit it, or aids or agrees or attempts to aid such other person. What is it exactly that the prosecution must prove that the defendant purposely solicited, aided, or agreed or attempted to aid? The MPC states the offense without breaking out the elements of the underlying offense. If the MPC stopped here, we would have to guess that to convict a defendant as an accessory to a certain offense, it would have to prove purpose as to each material element of the offense. That is not so. Earlier cases had soundly rejected that proposition. For example, in State v. McVeigh, an unseaworthy steamship was sent out across Narragansett Bay. The boiler exploded and many died. The captain and engineer on board the boat were prosecuted for manslaughter. And McVeigh, too, who, though not on board, had procured, counseled, and commanded the two principals to take the boat out. McVeigh was convicted, and on appeal, his counsel made what amounts to the following argument. To convict an accessory to manslaughter, the prosecution must show that it was the defendant's purpose to promote that offense. A resulting death is a material element of manslaughter. Therefore, the prosecution must show that it was the defendant's purpose that passengers die. There is no evidence that McVeigh had any such purpose. Therefore, the conviction must be set aside. The court in McVeigh was not persuaded. It wrote, There is no inherent reason why one may not aid, abet, counsel, command, or procure the doing of a lawful act in a negligent manner. The model penal code is in accord. 
When causing a particular result is an element of an offense, an accomplice in the conduct causing such a result is convictable of that offense if he acts with a kind of culpability, if any, with respect to that result that is sufficient for convicting the absolute perpetrator. Where the offense includes a result element, the level of culpability that must be shown as to that element is the same as what is sufficient to convict the first degree principle, i.e. the absolute perpetrator. In McVeigh, the charge was manslaughter. To convict the captain, the state had to show recklessness, not purpose. To convict an accessory, the state had to show purpose that the captain do something recklessly, not purpose that anyone die as a result. We need to bear this in mind when we read the preceding subsection. Indeed, it says with the purpose of promoting the offense, but what it means is with the purpose of promoting the conduct. In McVeigh's case, his purpose was to promote reckless sailing, not death. McVeigh, like the captain and the engineer, was reckless as to the result. What if the boiler hadn't burst? Could McVeigh be convicted of attempted manslaughter? The answer is no, he could not. Attempt liability requires purpose or belief as to the result. There is no evidence that McVeigh wanted anyone to die or that he believed anyone would. Let's keep track of the differences and similarities between attempt liability and accessorial liability. Both words begin with the letter A, so we have to be careful not to confuse them. And yes, an actor can be an accessory to an attempt, and an actor can attempt to be an accessory. As to the latter, under the model penal code, if you attempt to be an accessory to criminal conduct, then you are. You cannot fail. Puzzling? We'll attempt to take the mystery out of this next time.